So I recently had the immense privilege of making a video on Brad Traversy's channel, Traversy Media. You may have heard of it. And in that video, I built a multiplayer snake game using Socket.io. And in about an hour and 20 minutes, I went from a blank directory to a fully working multiplayer snake game. But what I didn't talk about in that video is how to deploy the game onto the internet so that anybody can play it. So that is exactly what we're gonna do in this video. So if you haven't seen that video already on Brad's channel, go over and watch that now and then come back here and everything will make a little bit more sense. Okay. So you're back. So what we have is the front end folder and the server folder. The front end folder is just static HTML and some JavaScript. There's no build steps, nothing. So we can deploy that onto a front end web server anywhere in the world and it will just work. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna push it onto Netlify. But then we want the server to be running as a dynamic express app with WebSockets. And we're gonna push that server folder to Heroku. So we're gonna have our front end on Netlify, our back end on Heroku, and they're both gonna be working from the single Git repository. So when we push to Git, it will deploy the front end to Netlify and the back end to Heroku and everything will just work. So step one, Let's get set up with Netlify. So head over to netlify.com and sign up for an account if you haven't got one already. And if you do have one, you can log in. That's exactly what I'm gonna do now. And for those of you who don't know Netlify, it's really worth learning about. It is an amazing tool. So all we're gonna have to do here is click new site from Git. I wanna come from GitHub, please. We're authorized. So the repository I want is from my Hungry Turtle Code organization. So I'll open that up. And we want the multiplayer snake, which is right there. And we want to deploy the master branch. And the build command, we don't need one because there is no build step. It is already in deployable HTML and JavaScript. And then the published directory, we want that to be front end. So if we have a look back at our repo here, we have a front end directory and if we drive into that, that's what's got our HTML and our JavaScript. So in our Netlify, we'll just specify the front end as our published directory, deploy site. We click that and we just wait. And here we go, it's deployed and we click that and there we go. I mean, that's a short video. Obviously we're not quite done yet, but it is just quite amazing that this exists, right? I'm impressed and I've used this quite a lot and I'm still impressed. Netlify, well done you. Incredibly simple. So now we have the front end. We need to deploy our back end to Heroku. So to deploy to Heroku, we're gonna need a Heroku account. So hop on over to heroku.com and sign up for an account. I'm gonna log in. So now that you've got an account, you're gonna need to download and install the Heroku CLI. So you can come over here to the Dev Center, Heroku CLI. You can just Google this. If you just Google Heroku CLI, it will pop up with this and you can follow the installation instructions for whichever OS you're on. And I'm currently on Linux. So I followed the instructions for Linux. I'm using Arch and it's down here somewhere. I just installed it using that command there. But you just follow whichever one you need to get it up and running on your system. And then if you follow those instructions correctly, you should be able to run Heroku login. And then it's gonna open you up in the browser and you can log in. Because I'm already logged in, I can close that because I'm all good. Now I come back to the terminal and I am successfully logged in. And I'm also inside the directory for this particular project. And now I wanna run Heroku create and that's going to create an app in Heroku and it's going to set up a new git repo that we can push to but we're not going to use the Heroku git repo we're going to use the one on github so that we can control Netlify and Heroku together but we can see here the URL it's given us for our API and the URL of the git repo that it's created for us and because we're running WebSockets, we want sticky servers meaning every time a user connects they're gonna be connected to the same server. And that means that we can use WebSockets without any kind of weirdness happening. 
And the way that we do that is we need to enable the session affinity flag inside Heroku. So we do that with the Heroku CLI, Heroku features colon enable. The flag we want to enable is called HTTP dash session dash affinity. Now it's enabled that session affinity, which is going to mean that WebSockets is going to work a little nicer, especially if we start to scale out to multiple servers. So now we want to head back into our Heroku dashboard and we'll just refresh and we see this Sleepy Island project, which is the one that it created for us when we ran Heroku Create. Let's jump into that project and let's click on the Deploy tab. And we can see here we've got Heroku Git and that was set up for us automatically, but we want to connect to GitHub and I've already connected my GitHub account to Heroku, so this shows up. But for you, you might have to authorize Heroku to your GitHub account. So like we did on Netlify, we want to go into our Hungry Turtle code organization. And I'll search for multiplayer search. And we have our multiplayer snake. We'll connect that Git repo to Heroku. So on Netlify, we can just say the published directory was front end and everything just worked. That's not quite the same on Heroku. While it is quite easy, there is an extra step we're gonna to have to take because we don't wanna deploy the root of our application. If you remember back here into our Git repo, we have front end and server. We wanna set things up from inside this directory. So we wanna run the npm install and the npm start to get the server spun up inside this directory. And to do that, we're gonna to have to add something to Heroku called a build pack. So if we go back into the dashboard, and we go to settings, we scroll down, we have this area called build packs. And the build pack that we're gonna to wanna to add is this subdirectory Heroku build pack from GitHub. And what it allows us to do is use this project path environment variable to specify where our project is supposed to be built from. And then this build pack will ensure that that is the root of our project whenever it comes to the build time. But we wanna add build pack and it gives us the option of adding a URL. So we'll come here and copy the URL of this Git repo and we'll paste it in there, save changes, and it's gonna add that build pack. And we also wanna add the node build pack just to be sure that it Heroku knows to be running a Node.js application and we'll add that in there. And just like it said inside the subdirectory build pack repo, we're gonna to need to add a project path environment variable. So we will create a new configuration variable and we'll call it project underscore path. And the value of that is going to be server. And we will add that there. We'll just hide those configuration variables. So that's everything we need to do inside the Heroku dashboard. There's one thing we need to change in our code. If we come into the terminal and open up our code, go into the server folder, go to server.js, we can see down here at the bottom, we're listening on port 3000 and that's hard coded. But when we're running on Heroku, we don't necessarily know which port the application is gonna be running on. So we need to use the environment variable of port, which is in injected into our application by Heroku. So let's give ourselves some space here so we can see what we're doing. And then we're gonna leave this 3000 there as a fallback, but the main value we wanna use is process.env.port and then the or symbol, or 3000. So Heroku is gonna inject a port environment variable into our application and we're gonna use that. But if that doesn't exist, we'll fall back to the port 3000. That's the only change we need to make to the back end but we do need to make one more change to the front end. So if we go into our front end index.js, we have the socket binding to localhost port 3000. We don't want to bind to that. We want to bind to our Heroku URL. So if we go into Heroku again, and we just scroll down to the domains here, we can see this is our domain. So we want to copy that and jump into our front end again and just replace this localhost call with that URL. And we don't need to worry about the ports because Heroku takes care of that. So our port that's being injected into the server can be any port number. But then Heroku reveals this domain on port 80, which is the default port for HTTP. And it figures out how to bind that port 
80, 87 or whatever it happens to be that's injected into the application. And it knows how to bind that back to the port 80 on this particular domain. We don't need to worry about that. Heroku has handled that complexity for us, which is wonderful. So we just connect to that URL, to the WebSocket there, and everything will work. We've made the changes to our server, made the changes to our front end, so we can commit those changes. So we'll just run git status quickly, and we see we've got two changes there. Git add front end and server, and then git commit update code for deploy process. And then git push origin master, and that's going to push up to the master branch and Netlify is listening to the master branch. So it's going to deploy our front end and Heroku is bound with that Git repo. So it can also deploy our back end. But we actually haven't enabled automatic deployment on Heroku yet. So we're going to have to deploy manually, but that's fine. We just hop into our Heroku dashboard, go to the deploy tab, scroll down and we'll hit deploy branch. And that's going to pull our master branch and deploy that out into the world. We get some status updates here and everything's good. If we do want to set up automatic deployment, we just have to click automatic deploys here and we now have automatic deployments enabled. So now in the future, anytime we push to our master branch on GitHub, it will automatically deploy to Heroku for the back end and automatically deploy to Netlify for the front end. So now if we hop back over to the Netlify URL that we have open here and we refresh it, we should be working with the new deployment. So if I hit create new game, we get a game code and that's coming directly from Heroku. So everything's just working. So now if I copy that game code and send it to somebody and hopefully they'll connect to the game and we'll be playing a real snake game. And there we go, we're moving. Oh, and I win because they went off the screen and I'm the best. But there we go. We deployed our snake game to the internet with automatic deploys, front end pushing to Netlify, the back end's pushing to Heroku. Everything's happening automatically on a push to Git. And it really didn't take us that long. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and you know a little bit more about how to deploy. But until next time, stay hungry and keep coding.